Yo. Hey, man. What's going on? Every time you come on now, I just have to see what color your head is. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Fuck this thing. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't maybe, right. maybe one of these days I'll break down and buy my own computer, but nah. Um, well, either way, yeah, at least it's like it's it's suitable now. Yeah, it's sure it's bright blue, so I mean it works. The shirt's a baby robin blue. Brings out the baby blue in my ass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Even the flag behind you, the colors are pretty good. They're yeah, not I don't too know. far off. It's like a little washed out, but not bad. It's just it's like it's like a black light element on the fucking camera, some weird shit. I have no idea. I don't know what it is. I asked my the lady at work, and she's like, Yeah, we've had that problem. I'm like, oh, well, I need it. She's like, well, just put an IT ticket in. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's really going to work if you can't fucking old fix it. The old computer lady. Fucking IT ticket. My wife goes through a company that does IT tickets, and she's she's just like, uh, my whole day is ruined if I have to do an IT ticket. And most of the time, like, there's like a hotline to call, and I, I swear to God, they over, it's like overseas. I'm like, oh, come on. Company. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's awful. That sucks. Uh, yeah, I put it. I my one of my monitors died three weeks ago, and we don't have an IT. I just email our IT guy, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, I got a response that said, <laughs> it's like, what did it say? He's like, how long has that been acted up? I answered him, haven't heard back for three weeks. So there's my fucking IT ticket. <laughs> of course, of course, that's not just the way they want to fuck you. Yeah, doesn't matter. Whatever. I got this going on. This is working fine today. Even though yesterday it uh, it failed, this is going to be an interesting couple of shows here, Bill. So uh, I pulled a queen. We're we're recording on Monday instead of generally we record on Tuesday. Uh, the Monday show was recorded on Sunday. We have to get the Tuesday show and the Wednesday show. There's not a lot that's gone on in the 24 no. hours since we've spoken. Not so, a, in fact, none. <laughs> nothing. Fact, nothing <laughs> related to Boston sports really Listen. has gone on. This is all Ray's fault. Yeah, this is absolutely Ray's fault. Uh, 110%. Um, I don't even, I haven't even decided, should we just do, so I had the idea, Wednesday's headlines, we should just talk as if uh, the Bruins and or the Celtics either won or lost. So, yes, yeah, let's do it. So then, <laughs> so then we can just cut it depending on whether they won or lost. Will sound right? And we'll make it like a five-minute show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nope, that sounds good. So, uh, all right, fine. This is the Wednesday show. Welcome to uh, the Wednesday edition, May 19th, uh, Super Mind Sports Show. Welcome to the show. I'm not even doing. I don't even remember how to do the intro right at, at this point in time. You're, but you're, fl- you're flustered today, huh? I, I, I'm, I've been straight out. We're on the verge of a three-week New England tour with Ooh, the uh, first trip with the kids. So you know, it, we're just absolutely out of our minds. And uh, you know, I'm in charge of the packing and planning and everything. So yeah, it's been a day. Leaving uh, in the morning, right? Yeah, basically, ass crack of dawn. Whenever. Uh, What's that drive? Nine hours. 10 it's like 10 but we break it up we'll stop out in western mass to see some folks yeah. tomorrow so yeah. it's it's will yeah, be right in my m- neck of the woods down there in western mass yeah not too far closer to springfield but yeah it's a manageable six hours tomorrow so it's it's not too bad uh especially if i can get my hands on a little bit of white birch brewery beer while i'm up there which i plan to do we're in the works of maybe doing a show at the brewery we'll see uh, but White Birch Brewery, uh, address, please, Bill. 460 Amherst Street. Bingo. Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, head on down to the tap room. Look, Massachusetts is open at the end of May. New Hampshire has just always been open because live free or die, right? Uh, so get down get down to the – it's time to start getting back to normal life the way Bill has been living for a full year and a half. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did the quarantine for a month, and that have been just – there Bug you it. go. There you go. We're getting back to that. So head on down to White Birch. Uh, and now we can at least say drink responsibly, not breathe responsibly. Drink responsibly at the brewery. Get yourself a flight. Get yourself a pint or don't and get yourself an Uber. I don't care. Either way, uh, wherever you get it, whether it's in the stores or at the at the tap room, tell them the Simple Minds boys sent you White Birch Brewing. Um, all right. Here's what I want to do for the Wednesday show. 
Uh, instead of getting into the final results um, that we absolutely know between the Celtics and the Bruins, <laughs> I'd like to actually just start Patriots and talk a little scuttlebutt. Uh, Kraft was in the news. He had a, had a decent little uh, blurb Oof. on Belichick, <laughs> but some would call it a dig. Uh, but let's start here. Mike Tannenbaum had uh, not quite an article with just some rumoring that Julio Jones, the best fit for a trade for Julio Jones right now is the new England Patriots. I, I know, but I know you've heard this too, Bill, but I've been hearing the scuttlebutt about Julio Jones of the Patriots for since before the draft. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense to me for a lot of reasons, but let's leave that aside. Would you want Julio Jones on this team? Is that a dumb question? I mean, if he's healthy, absolutely. Yeah. You know, he's, he was bagged up last year. I think he only played nine games last year. You know, and the, the contract, I mean, the, the contract's huge. You know, I mean, sorry to getting... interrupt you, but this is also why we need Ray to be our little fucking errand boy. I would like to see how many, I'm going to look it up while you talk. How many seasons, full seasons has Julio Jones played? Because he's always dinged up. He's always dinged up. I'd probably say four to three to four full seasons. But I mean, nine games last year. He had what, a foot injury all year. You know, that's big. I just think you're a 31 year old wide receiver. You know, I mean, you, you're a, you run. You know, you're Randy Moss territory, those routes that he runs down the field. And and it's like if you got to believe in Mac Jones, honestly, if you if you're going to go get Julio, because let's be real, Cam Newton can't throw the fucking football to him. Yeah. So, I mean, do I want him? Yeah. If he's healthy, that's a fucking little. He's one of the top five wide receivers in our generation, probably at this point. I mean, in the definitely in the league now. So, fuck yeah. I mean, but again, the money and the, the health scare the shit out of me. He's an absolute. Obviously, yeah. I mean, he's an absolute stud. Um, he. He was in the conversation for the best wide receiver in football for a long time. And this is surprising as usual, per usual, I was kind of wrong. Um, he's played in 15 or 16 games, basically since 2014 until last year, 2016, he played in 14 games, but doesn't it seem like he's always on the injury report? Yeah. Hamstring foot, you know, so he just... plays, he's a gamer. He's a stud that Super Bowl against the Falcons, that catch he made in the sideline, which broke everyone's heart in New England, knowing that was the end of the game, even though it wasn't because it Thanks, Kyle was Kyle Shanahan. So <laughs> fucking dumb. That catch though was, I mean, yeah. disgusting. So do you want Julio Jones? Of course you want Julio Jones. If in terms of, will the Patriots do it? He's got to come on their terms. He's got to redo his contract. Uh, the trade's got to be right. They're not going to overextend themselves. 30 million in dead cap for the Atlanta Falcons. So, you know, they, they could stretch it over two years. I think 15 this year and 15 next year, but that's a big, they just signed him to a monster deal. So, I mean, that's big, especially if you might want to move on from Matt Ryan. In the it is surprising years. that he is in the, you know, in the Mike Tenenbaum rumor mill because of all that in the Falcons there, you know, the way that they drafted the way that they've handled these free agency, they're not, that still doesn't look like they're looking to rebuild or, or uh, blow the thing up. No, they just went out and got Kyle Pitts too. I mean, you think Jones Pitts and uh, Calvin Ridley there, plus they yeah. had the, um, the, the tight end they got from Baltimore. Um, I forget his name. You would probably know because you're in that area. They traded for him last year after they lost. Um, oh, uh, Hurst, Hayden Hurst. Yeah. Was he Something from Baltimore or Cleveland? Baltimore. The guy they had before went to Cleveland. I forget right. That's name. what Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper. Yeah. That's I mean, anyway, yeah. That, to your point, like they they went out fourth overall and dry, drafted Kyle Pitts. Like I, I get the money. Which Mike, is insane in its own right. Yeah. Well, it's stupid. <laughs> Though I get, you know, they maybe they're under a crunch money wise, maybe real money wise. Arthur Blank, the best uh, non evil villain, evil, evil villain in sports, might be looking to shed some actual salary and not pay out the ass for aging. Dude, speaking of that but... Super Bowl, though, he fucking cursed himself when he walked down there with his dumb wife. Oh, <laughs> dude, I fucking loved it. Doesn't I, that oh, like God. he just deserves a pencil thin mustache with twirlies on the end and a fucking uh, French uh -huh. cigarette with a, like, with the holder. Yeah. The long yeah, yeah. hole fucking with holder. The stem. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know, watching babies burn like that's our blanks. Look, it's, it's unbelievable. He's perfect for that franchise. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, but Julio Jones is not coming to the Patriots. Sorry. There's no way. Bill, Bill. Bill told fucking Dimitriov not to trade up to draft him. <laughs> Let's not remember that. He called Bill and said, what do I do? Don't fucking do this. Yeah. yeah and what has it done? I mean, where a big time wide receiver. When's the last time a huge, you know, number one wide receiver, like has won a Super Bowl. I mean, Tyree kill, I guess you kid it, but he's, I don't consider him in the, 
Julio Jones mold. You know, I think Tyree kills more of a product of fucking Patrick Mahomes, but that's a different story. Yeah. You know, some of these big name wide receivers, they ain't win fucking Super Bowls. And it's the same thing with the running backs. You know, Calvin Johnson's the best wide receiver we've seen in how long, right? Yeah, never probably, won a fucking, yeah. never won a Super Bowl, and you're paying 18 to $20 million for a wide receiver. It's the same thing with fucking running backs. Never won a playoff game. That might be a more Detroit thing, but that's your a overall, Detroit thing. Yeah. Your overall point is correct. The the best wide receivers in the league aren't aren't really winning shit for whatever reason. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I guess you have to. You know, is the offense too focused around the wrong point? Are they making too much money where it can't go to the? You know, you got to pay your quarterback big money, so then you got to pay your wide receiver big money. Are you just crunched at that point? Yeah, you 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 don't see big time wide receivers like that win. Um, that's why I mean, if he came to New England, he'd come on New England's terms, and that's the only way he'd get here. And I don't see that happening. So, sorry, Tannenbaum. Nice, nice little uh, rumor though. This one's better. Robert Kraft and uh, I think it's TMZ. <laughs> Asking, obviously, about Mac Jones and Cam Newton. He was diplomatic about uh, both Cam Newton and Mac Jones, saying it's good to have them both. When asked who would start, he said, I pay Bill Belichick a lot of money to make that decision for me. I kind of like it. Like, (laughs) what a fucking line. I fucking, I I take it back. I actually really love that line. Like, just that subtle, it's a subtle dig. Like, he could have said, I pay Bill Belichick money to make that decision. And there's nothing, I would say, oh, cool. You know, that's what you say. I pay Bill a lot of money to make that decision. (laughs) A lot of money. $25 million worth of money to make a quarterback decision. That's a fucking dig. Like, and you've heard it. Like, it's been rumored, is he on the hot seat? Is he on the hot seat? No. He's got a free reign until he fucking wants to retire. And everybody fucking knows it. But... Then you see him. I think Krabs was pissed off for last year with the Cam Newton shit and the way the Brady thing unfolded. You know what I mean? I think that's the way it, it ended up coming down. I think Bill's a driving force of that going back 10 years. That's when the riff started. You heard, you know, fucking senior called in and said, yeah, you know, we're coming up here to beat him. But he called in the radio 10 years ago, said it's not going to end in New England. They fucking yeah. do. So I think that's where, you know, the fifth son comes into play. You know, I still think he's he just watched Tom Brady win a fucking Super Bowl and you went seven and nine with Cam Newton. You know, yeah. I think that's where the, a lot of money came in. I think, yeah, I think Robert Kraft is playing a little bit of damage control as he should as the owner of the team. Now, he hasn't had the need to do that for damn near 20 years at any point in time. He's, you know, it it seems a little bit uncommon because I don't think he's ever, he hasn't had the need to do this in a very long time, but he's coming off a seven and nine season with a lot of pressure on the greatest franchise in sports history and what they've done for the past 20 years. And I think he's playing some damage control on it. Even when, when he was asked about Tom Brady, he said, you know, it'll be great to have him in the building. He did so much for us for 20 years i love him and it was kind of on the next question he did not he's ready to move past brady the team has to move past brady when asked about you know the camp i think he's applying pressure to bill belichick because he and everybody else that's reading tea leaves saw bill belichick took his foot off the gas a little bit and it showed you know you didn't have a plan for when brady left you stunk last year uh and and that's not going to be acceptable for robert Kraft. so yeah he's not in the hot seat you bozos bill belichick is not in the hot seat However, I do think Kraft has had a conversation with him and they've had a conversation that uh, this this year has to be good. In I, whatever, however, he thinks that looks like it has to be good. Let me ask you a question. What's the narrative going to be if you let Tom Brady walk out the door and then you fire Bill Belichick? Not great. <laughs> Not great at fucking all. Yeah, Not that's great a, at yeah all. no, it's a great it's an act. That's actually a fantastic point. Uh, <laughs> Kraft allowing Bill to let Brady walk has now put pressure on Kraft to make it work like you can't you can't let the two greatest of all time leave because if you fire bill belichick right now i don't think he's walking off into the sunset i think he's called new york giants and going hey i got five more years let's do this or whoever whoever's ready to win and uh craft is going to be left holding his smenger in his hand or Where would he uh, in go? some massage therapist's hand i don't and, know if uh, it would be the giants though honestly like because they just hired joe judge they seem to like him you know, where the fuck would he go? Like it's a that, good he would res- that he would respect. It's a good question. Like, I, I, I think that he would pick a team that's um, pretty ready to win and, you know, established, ready to go. That maybe is in flux on the. How coaching, funny would it be if he went back role? to the Jets? <laughs> how fucking he fucking hates the Jets so bad, but like he hates Woody Johnson and all that. But how fucking hilarious! Or the Texans. How funny he goes out of fucking Texas and turns them into a Super he Bowl is winner a in a year. Spiteful asshole, man. If Kraft just kind of fired him out of nowhere because he got, I I wouldn't put a spite. I think Cleveland, though, honestly, if you think about it, because he still he still has deep roots to Cleveland. 
Yeah, Cleveland. Cleveland's a good one. Um, but the Giants would be the top yeah, job. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. But again, that's not happening. And we all expect them to have a good year, depending on the quarterback play. Beautiful segue, Rich. Uh, so uh, voluntary camp is running. Mac Jones is there. Cam Newton is there. Although there's not a lot of talk about Cam Newton. It's all about Mac Jones. Oh, uh, Newton is there? I okay. think so. I, I'm pretty sure. I know well, it's I, it's rookie camp right now. No, no, it's just I think it's oh, just sorry. rookie camp. It's rookie well, he camp. showed up for voluntary workouts, is what I'm thinking about. And uh, yeah, voluntary workouts a week oh, ago. Cam Newton showed up. Oh, God yeah. damn it! This is God rookie camp. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, and Mac Jones is there, and <laughs> the report was he looks great. Hasn't thrown the ball yet, but he looks great. Oh, great handing. Oh, uh, who? I think it was uh, Ben <laughs> Volan. I think. Um, tweeted something about him just handing the football off. Yeah. And, I was like, and I fucking hate trolling Volan, like with a patch. I hate him and Dan Shaughnessy. I fucking hate both of them, but that just made me laugh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking terrific footwork out of Mac Jones. What do you, how do you look? Uh, terrific. Hasn't thrown the ball yet, but footwork. Handed Dude, it off. me and my bum awesome. ass shoulder can hand it off 40 fucking times. Come on. What's your update? What's your up status update? Uh, fence rider on the Cam Newton, Mac Jones. Last we spoke, you were steadfast that Cam Newton will be starting week one. Um, wh- where do you where do you lean now? Do you think that there's going to be a change with camp happening in an actual competition this year? Uh, no, I still think it's Cam's job. To, I th- it's Cam's job to lose. I still expect him to start week one. I really do. And I mean, if you look at it, I know it's early, but he's third on the depth chart now with Mac Jones. I mean, Stidham's still on the roster. So, I mean, if you're bringing three quarterbacks in, you know, you better – he's got to get meaningful playing time and you only got three fucking preseason games this year. And you got to like a, basically a buy before week one. I just don't see it. I just think maybe if you had that fourth preseason game, you can kind of get him in there more than you would. But if you're still going with Stidham and Mac Jones and Cam Newton right now, yeah, there's could be a competition, but I still think it's Cam's to lose. What do you week think of the, the Bedard's? I don't know if there was an actual report or a rumor that the re one of the reasons that uh, Belichick and the Patriots have not come out really high on um, uh, Mac Jones is because they don't want to upset Cam Newton. Let me answer my own question. I believe this and I, I'm not trying to be a homer or jump on the uh, Mac 10 train here, but I think that the way that uh, Bill Belichick has talked so highly of Cam Newton is not necessarily because of how much Cam kisses his ass and has played in the system. Uh, although local radio shows would make you think that. I think Bill Belichick understands that Cam Newton needs to be treated with white gloves. He needs to be treated like a king to get the best out of him. And I think that this whole Mac Jones thing kind of plays into it. You draft a guy 15 overall, but you're still relying on, you're still potentially relying on Cam Newton to uh, be the best quarterback for you on the field, which is unfortunately where the Patriots are at. You need the best out of Newton. So I, I don't actually, I don't really discredit that line of thinking from Bedard there. No, I don't. And, and one of the things, too, I think you kind of forgot to mention, like I don't with the white gloves, but the, the leadership in the locker room, guys rally around Cam Newton. Say what, you, say what you want about, you know, the, his play on the field. Every single thing in Cam's life is great until he steps onto that football field. And that's the fucking problem. But that leadership, you saw him, I get it. I, I'm sure it came from Bill, but he was voted a captain last year. You see the guys love him. They rally around him. I mean, you know, say what you want, the stupid nicknames he gives everybody. But you know what I mean? You need just, it. You need the you need the leadership. He's been in the league for a long time. He's been to a Super Bowl. He's been in an MVP. He's been a lot of playoff games. I was just watching in 2014 the uh, the sound effects best of and Cam's in there fucking against Seattle. They won a playoff game there. I mean, he's been in the league for a while. Guys respect him, and I think that's why you're seeing it because they, they, you know you lost some guys. You lost a little bit of leadership for it. You know, even Joe Tooney is captain on that line too. So I mean, there's some leadership. For, uh, even with break going back to break too. So I think that's why you're seeing it. I'll just say this about the leadership aspect. I think that was really important last year, specifically because their team sucked and their roster was so bad. And there was a huge gaping hole with Brady, not there. And if you tried to fill that hole, Ray's mom joke with uh, Jared Stidham <laughs> <laughs> versus. See, a I don't even think of that. Cause he's not here. <laughs> I listened to our other show and I was like, wow, it's smooth. Really good. We just got in and out. And then I was like, dude, if all the beeps, all the stuff, because come be- because of Ray's here. Yeah, I get in and out of Ray's mom all the time, too, similar to our show uh, on Monday. I, I just I think I, I think that leadership point was more important last year in, a, in the first year without Brady in a, in a roster that was really bad, that needed positive energy that I, I, my, I my greater point here, not to 
continue to go on is that it won't be as much if if Mac Jones is out playing Cam Newton on the practice squad on the practice field and Patriots are losing games, that locker room dynamic will is going to change. Oh, it's got to. If it, you it, have it, the better talent, it's got to. I don't mean no matter up, how yeah. good of a guy you are and how great of a lead you leader you are, guys just want to win. And if the kid is slinging the ball around and beating the and beating the first team defense, and Cam Newton is struggling to to get sixty nine yards again, nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> then you're gonna see fucking Mac Jones, and that's gonna be a team decision. That like that's just what it is. Uh, last question on this, I didn't put in the email, but I forget where I think it was Fulgham as I heard it today. Someone anticipated Week Five, Houston, the first time we see Mac Jones, real soft landing spot there. Uh, obviously, after the Brady game. I'm torn in this on whether Bill has the sack to put Mac Jones in that Brady game, or does he leave Cam in there to get slaughtered? Because I think that's what's going to happen if Cam how, plays against Brady. How, how fucking sweet it would be if Cam gets oh. hurt week week three and Mac Jones comes in and oh. lights up Tampa. Oh, my God. you fu- oh, Dude, I, oh, man. So but, much no, less I mean, pressure because you're just coming yeah, off an injury you're problem. Playing this, like, but the thing is, Super Bowl champions, like, you, you're fucking – like, I don't think it's going to intimidate Jones. He's a, what, a two-time national championship I think he's uh, all reports is he's a cocky little asshole. Good. He's got a couple good. DUIs under his belt. He's a little bit of a wild child. Like nice. I, I'm, the I like more it. more I hear I'm about all Jones, in. I'm a, yeah. I like it because he's in a patch uniform and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for a year or two. But the more I hear about this kid and he's an asshole at practice, he told off Nick Saban on the practice squad the first year he was there. Yeah. I like him, man. I like yeah, him. I'm, I'm coming around and, you know, I was down on him early, but a week five landing spot's nice. Not a, you know, if you kind of think of what Miami did with Tua last year, you know, I know that Ryan Fitzpatrick, but Ryan Fitzpatrick was a better quarterback than Cam Newton. You know, they kept him on for that leadership role, which is, you know, in case something happened. So, I, you know, five, week five, week six, somewhere in there, you want to give him an easy game. And that Houston game, you know, I guarantee you're not going to have Deshaun Watson. So, let's be real. I mean, he's, he's – <laughs> yeah, no, he, no, 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 no. That until, that should, shit, until that shit plays out, he's on the exempt list and get paid. So yeah, They could bring Brian Horner back and, and win that game. Um, all right, good Pat's talk. Good, good Pat's talk. The rest of this is going to be rough. <laughs> oh, I, I'm actually really excited. For this. Okay, uh, let's do this first then. Uh, hot Passport, you've heard us talk about it before. Bill's got his. I got mine. You can get it in, in Passport form or digital form. Either way, it's 25 bucks. You get 50% off your first two beers at 50 plus breweries in the greater Northeast region. This reaches all the way to Wisconsin, which the obvious one, the bottom of the totem pole of dumb Ray believes is in the Northeast. Um, all you got to do is go to joinhoppassport.com, Put in the word simple S I M P L E in the coupon code, get $5 off. So it's 20 bucks. Basically you get six pints at, three breweries you've already made five bucks on this thing it's an absolute no-brainer if you can hit some breweries this summer join hotpassport.com and uh, for all you new england folks get the new york version i know that's a little bit blasphemous from from new england but that's the one that you want with all the local breweries all right let's talk bees that monday night game was a doozy uh (laughs) what a what a what a performance out of the local uh out of the local pond boys um uh, i thought uh mcavoy uh, had a good game against this is hard this is very this, hard to yeah do. yeah <laughs> bruins oh, won God. hey uh, all right fine let's just put our ex- uh, Bruin. we i think we both expect the bruins to win yeah their reputation in the yep. playoffs is not to lay down and die i they, they're going to come back strong um you're you made the point on monday's show that the one three one zone would be attacked differently I believe that's true. I'll throw a couple more things at you after the fact uh, we learned that um, the Capitals did not play Chara against the top two lines of the Bruins at all, at all. Basically the Bruins in turn did not really strategize that way. Um, Ovechkin's line was they played 11 minutes and five seconds against the third D play D pair. And you saw Wilson and Wilson and, um, the D guy, I forget again that they scored two goals on those guys. So, I mean, that's a fucking issue. Brad, Brad needs, I mean, Bruce, sorry. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> Jesus that's Christ. A Freudian slip. Whoa, we'll Jesus. get into what happened to the Celtics <laughs> on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, no, just but, after um, this, as we record on Monday night, time <laughs> is a fucking flat circle right now. <laughs> Bruce needs to make, you know, he, he needs to adjust. He, he doesn't like to make the moves. You, you know, you've been hearing all day. He doesn't like to play matchups on the road because he has with the last change that, you know, 
the um, Washington has, he doesn't like it. You see him play more of those matchups at home. That's why they're kind of a better home, uh, playoff team at home. But I mean, at this point, you can't go down two two uh, two zero. You know, you need to attack Chara. You need to attack the who's Jaffrey, I think, is or Judy or whatever. I forget his yeah, name. Is, yeah, is yeah. on the other side. Judon, I, yeah. no, something like that. You got to attack. You got to attack all of them, and you got to find a way. Get it. any chance you can get that number one or number two line out there, especially that number one. Pasternak, you saw it early in the game. He was kind of he had good puck control, and then that was it. Like they didn't try to attack that matchup at all. And the speed that Marshawn and, and Pasternak have, it it should be all all day against Chara and just try yeah. to get the matchup on all, all the, every chance you can get it on there. Cause your third D line, I'm sorry, I don't mean to ramble here, but your third D line with Miller and Clifton cannot keep matching up with this fucking uh, number one unit on Washington. And you can, you have to be careful how you're going to with Greslick. He's getting the shit kicked out of him. You saw it in game one. You can't like they read it. Athletic had a good article about it today. You can't play him on the top two lines and it, he's, it sucks for McAvoy. You got to make a change there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Brandon Carlo get, kind of move up there and make a, I think you can maybe get a shutdown pair with Carlo and um, McAvoy. The, this is the playoffs are not a time to toot toot, but fucking toot toot. Cause I call, I wanted that McAvoy Carlo line. To be your line, and I, I did say you might, you know, it's better to see it in the playoffs as opposed to during yeah, the season. I think we season. both kind of agreed on that because I, I said, you know, Charlie like is just not the same fucking thing. suited for playoff hockey. I'm sorry he's not. Like, I like, he's a, he would be a great third line defenseman mm. for the season to put on your power play if you want him to run it. Throwing up here, throw him on the first D line with McAvoy. You're not going to get away with it. You're just you're just not going to get away with it. So whether it or maybe it's a Mike Riley who's a little bit bigger can handle himself a little bit better with McAvoy. They haven't really played together since he came over, so maybe yeah. that would be a, too much of an adjustment. I don't know. But Grizzly not being able to put McAvoy up against Ovechkin or up against their top line that's a fucking problem, man. You're you're you can't live and die with. Clifton or Lausanne and Kevin Miller's skeleton of a, of a body, as much as we like Kevin Miller, yeah. they're going to get owned by those top two lines. And of course this is released on Wednesday. We're talking about it on Monday. I don't expect to see any of this in the game on Monday night, No, three to one Bruins. The Bruins have won three to one. <laughs> so uh, we look forward to tonight's game Wednesday <laughs> back in Boston. Uh, just uh, here's some motivation for you, bees. The state announced and uh, Boston announced that we are going to have they're fully Massachusetts is fully open May 29th, which means uh, the garden will be full capacity. If you can get to the second round, go to the second round, dude, I'm going. I don't care how much <laughs> there are, if I could be there. I have never felt um, I just need to pay for overpriced beers. I need a fucking twelve dollar beer in my fucking. I need two twelve dollar beers in my fucking yeah. hands, and I need to be screaming at a sporting event, not yeah. screaming at you guys on this fucking Zoom call. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that that that's true. Uh, everyone's gonna have that. Uh, what a. I mean, I get that stadiums and, and places have been open across the country in the South for uh, months now, uh, but look. Not to toot toot again, but Boston's a different kind of sports town. You you get you get a playoff game in the Garden second round with the Bruins first night back of full capacity after a year and a half. I may get arrested. It's gonna be you <laughs> half the fucking, <laughs> fucking you, you oh have six thousand arrests that night. Did you see? So uh, it was funny. UFC fight. There was like six fights in the stands. I think they were in Texas <laughs> or something, in Dallas or some shit like that. They were fighting <laughs> in the stands. They're, they're just ready. Dude, they're just I, I coming out of their eyes, oh, bleeding out oh of their mouth, God. just like uh, they don't know. No one's gonna know how to act in society anymore. Like everyone's gonna come in fucking sweatpants and holy shirt, like Bruins sweaters they've been wearing for a week straight without yeah, yeah. showering. It's gonna be an absolute scene. So pray, if that's pray that for anybody on the opposing team, because you see that video I was saying you know, the Rockies guy the other night, one punch <laughs> KO. That's oh, what's yeah. gonna fucking happen. That was what's going to fucking. I went to a Lakers Celtics playoff game and there was two guys in front of us and they were like, a, they were fucking like threatening. I'm like, dude, you'll be all right. Just get out of here. Like there's a bunch of pussies around. It's like, I'm not one of those guys. You've been at games with me. I'm yeah. not going to threaten somebody. It's like, Hey, just, you'll be fine. They're all fucking talking. They're going to fight you. Was, you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, that's, generally yeah, that's now, the case. But you now, might, but oh, we're no, going to fight. You're going to run fighting. into some of those glossy eyed, their eyes in the back of the head. Like just, they just need some physical altercation because no one's touched them in uh, 16 months. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, so that's the motivation wait. boys. It's Wednesday night right now. Go out there and win. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do tonight, Wednesday, Bill, if they're 1-1 or 0-2. Uh, 
We talked about it on Monday, uh, Monday's show. If they're O2, if they're O2, the Swayman decision is very easy for me. It, even if Rats goes out there, if it's if one nothing, out there, two nothing a, game, they, I, they're not, I don't think they pull Rask. But if it's, I know what I you're going to say. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know be. what you're going to say though. The fucking you know, a couple uh, softies. Depending on what goals. those one or two goals look like, one uh, I think two is your over under if Rask uh, starts in game three if they're down O2. Like if he gives don't up two goals, don't tell Ty Anderson that. Oh Jesus! Yeah, the boohoo Tuka oh, crew Jesus trademark. I'm so tired. Like so tired. It, what it, one way or another? Like you, I thought you put too much uh, heat on him for that goal in the overtime um, uh, on the in game one. Um, but you know, you're not you're not sitting there saying you can't blame him at all. The guys that think that you can't blame Tukarask at all, like dude, he not, even said it. His comments after the game, it hit me in the right now. God damn it! He hit it hit me in the chest. And then I pushed it in. I don't know. I'll have to go look at it. So it's like, all right, dude, come on. Another just infuriating. Dude. Oh my God. Like, like, I don't know how people can stand up for this fucking guy. You're a good one through round three. As soon as round four comes, you shit the fuck. I just don't, I don't understand it. I just yeah. don't understand the history of quitting on this guy. It just makes me so fucking angry. I want him out. Just start swimming tonight. I just want him out. makes me say if it's O2 right now, as, as, this, as this is recorded, I ex- I'd expect Swayman was the first goalie off the ice tonight. We'll, uh, we'll see if that happens because, again, we're recording Monday and I've already got a headache trying to figure out the days in which we're it's talking It's really about... confusing. It's so confusing. Because now we're going back to talk Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> After the show, we're going to do Tuesday show, which is just whatever. Uh, before we do that, let's quickly just uh, – so the Celtics played last night, Tuesday, uh, in their play-in tournament against Washington. We don't have to bounce back and forth. It's They lost. They lost. <laughs> So, Westbrook had 40 points, 20 rebounds, and I don't know, 40 assists. <laughs> Carried the whole yeah, fucking team. <laughs> yeah, Beal went for 56. Tatum had uh, 49. Kemba had 27. Marcus Smart had, got ejected. Uh, Tristan Thompson had a bunch of offensive rebounds. Uh, no one played defense, and they lost 127 to 119. Uh, go sees. Uh, now you're going to be taking on uh, the Pacers or the Hornets, whoever wins that game. And do you want uh, to predict? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the I'll take the Hornets. The Hornets. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, the Horn. I think the Hornets will be the Pacers. I think the Pacers are kind of a dead team. Yeah, yeah. and Miles Turner's still out, ain't he? Yeah, and I think they're going to get Miles Bridges back. Charlotte is so. Um, I think they should they should win. And uh, if the Celtics play Charlotte, the Celtics Loss. will lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Unbelievable. Yeah. Lamelo's back. I mean, he's looking fucking good. Yeah, you know. And now I don't know is Gordon back yet? Probably not. Probably not. No. <laughs> if he is, he got hurt against the Pacers. Yeah, this is Wednesday. Recording this on Monday. Gordon Hayward got hurt in the playing game against the Pacers. <laughs> he's out for three weeks with an ankle boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> that was talking Celtics. Uh, Sox pick up a series on Tuesday night. Last night against the Blue Jays. Uh, game two is tonight, Wednesday night against the Blue Jays. Big series for me, honestly, I think. Uh, it's, you know, you played the Orioles, you played the Rays, who are the bottom of your of the AL East. Now, you, now you're going to pick up against the Blue Jays. They're not quite the Yankees, but they're a young, talented team I trying like to make team noise. Too. They got to, you know, they, they've been playing pretty good this year. Um, their pitching is, my knowledge on their pitching staff is limited. But either way, my point is, I think it's your first test in division this year. And yeah. it might be a good litmus test for the for the Red Sox, who, by the way, on Wednesday, still have the best record in baseball, I will say. Yeah, I do. Vlad Guerrero, is, you know, we talked about Devers. Vlad Guerrero, 22, That's is right. on superstar level. You know, he's he's right there, too. You know, and he's he shed up a shit ton of pounds this year. They're pitching. You got Ryu there. Who you got from the Dodgers a couple of years ago. Right. Uh, you, you did just pick up Robbie Ray, who strikes out a lot of guys, but he also walks a lot of guys. So, I mean, you know, coming from a team that strikes out a shit ton and doesn't walk, it doesn't bold well. But, again, their offense is good. They're the third team in the East. They're not that too far. I think they're, what, three or four games back. They're not that far behind. Yankees are two games back. You know, so, I mean, you're kind of holding up, but they just lost Stanton on Monday as we record this. Yep. He just went on the DL. So, I mean, he's been out, which God, I hate that, but uh, he's been out since Saturday. Or Friday. It's been out all weekend, just sitting there, just being hurt. I, <sighs> like what a we shit in the Red Sox a lot, and I don't know if they struck out on Stanton and settled for JD Martinez, but either way, 
what a win. What oh, a yeah. Win. And I mean, if you think about it, because they couldn't trade for him. So, yeah. Th- and they, they went out and signed. Yeah. They, they couldn't have the well, best. They were rumored yeah. in on Stanton and they didn't get him. And then in the following offseason, they signed JD Martinez. And that has been an absolute slam dunk of a win for the Red Sox over the Yankees. Stanton, what a win. What is this appointment? Oh, I know. But the Yankees have been a, too. Yankees have been a, yeah, but Yankees have been on a tear, uh, you know, working the way up in the standings and the Blue Jays have been holding on. So uh, I'm interested to see, can you keep up the winning ways? Are you a team that's beating up on the shitty AL uh, conference? They're, they're playing the Texas uh, Rangers tonight too. And they got Garrett Cole on the mound. So uh, win Yankees. Yeah. Monday night, the Yankees won with Garrett Cole who's been pitching his ass off. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's so fucking good. Dude, he's so good. Like him and Degrom are the two best pitchers in the league. And I don't know. I don't, I know you don't care about fantasy baseball, but someone offered me Degrom for Garrett Cole, and I was like, Oh God, <laughs> it's like a wash. Difference? I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah. Although Degrom, just is he back from injury yet? Did Friday. He, so did he Friday. Fall in the so, IL? Yeah, he's supposed to be yeah. back Friday, but he's got a weird injury. They couldn't find a tear, so you know it's like a weird muscle strain on his side. You know, he had an MRI on it, but I just feel like it just has the makings of one of those like lingering. He's a fucking lingerer, man. Linger, one of those things. Linger. One, one of those things all weekend, all year, I should say. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this was interesting, confusing, fun. Uh, good Patriots talk. The rest of it, we'll see. Uh, go Bees tonight, Wednesday. Go Celtics. I think they'll play Thursday, probably. Lose. Tomorrow, I mean. <laughs> Uh, you're probably going to lose. So uh, put us out of our misery there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll catch back up after that. This has been the Some Mind Sports Show Wednesday edition, May 19th. We'll see you on Thursday for our interview with the Bag and um, – not the Bag and Brats, sorry. It's, it's like, no, Girls no, no, no. Throw 2. Uh, they are a handful. <laughs> oh, my God. They just – it sounded like you just said Girls Throat 2. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, there's some pornographic uh, references in the interview on Thursday, so you're not going to want to miss it. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. How good? Was that funny, though? Did you listen back to it? I haven't, I haven't gone back and listened to that show yet, but yeah, it was funny. I mean, it was chaotic. We talked for five minutes, and then Whitney was like, wait, you're recording? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was she, the, she was the blonde it, one, right? Yeah. Was, oh, she was, oh, man, wasted, it sounded yeah, like. I've never so. met her before, but she sounded wasted. She was talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the um, yeah, and then the pre-show they were emailing us. You know, do you guys have any pre-show questions or anything you want to talk about? I leave that up to Ray to communicate with the guests. Says that's his. He never fucking emailed them, so they're like, I assume it's just kind of a wing it, uh, or a, you know, and like yeah, yeah, it's real casual. So they took that to heart and ran with it, which I love. It was great. It was oh, fun. I mean, they were slamming drinks, except for uh, the other one was a little more. Uh... She was a little reserved, but I, little she, had a, reserved, that's she had a glass of wine or a sangria yeah, or something. There. Something she like was, that. Yeah, she was sipping. Um, yeah, that was fun. They, they were they were. A, <laughs> I had a lot of laughs. The, the best <laughs> part was to just see Ray's angry face in the corner. <laughs> he was so pissed. He was so mad. He couldn't catch up. He couldn't figure out what to talk about. He just he didn't know where any of the questions we were at. No. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Thursday. Okay. <laughs>